Recording. Hello. All right. Welcome, typewriter friends. Uh, wait. Am I? I'm seeing a Hammond in the middle of my screen. Well, that's great. That's a good well, thing. Hopefully, uh, they put my picture up there. But um, you actually have to. So you need to probably change from uh, uh, speaker view to either a grid view. There, there should be a button. If you're looking at your laptop, I believe I it's a gallery the view. Yes, there we go. OK. All so right. gallery view. Yeah, and you can pen your you can pen someone like you can pen your specific person if you wanted to, where you're okay. only seeing just you. Uh, pen video. There we go. That's what I wanted to see. All right. Oh, I got here a little late. Yeah, I, me too. I was gonna try. <laughs> I was gonna try to help you with uh, getting started here, but I got stuck in the other room. Okay. Well, uh, I think we've got everything set up correctly. Um, I have got my presentation here. And uh, I just need to know when to start. Should I start now? Yeah, I think everything's good to go. OK. Well, welcome, typewriter friends. Uh, we're going to be learning how to use the typewriter database to find out when your typewriter was made. We're going to look at some uh, typewriters and some information in gallery view and uh, learn how those views work when you're uh, logged in, when you're not logged in and when you're logged in as a typewriter hunter, and then we're gonna teach you how to be a typewriter hunter. And so how does how do people feel about that? That's good. <laughs> Fantastic. Okay. Yay. Well, Yay. I have got a Corona 4 here, which we are gonna find out when it was made, even though I know when it was made. But we take the serial number, which on this model is down here in the, the bottom, and I happen to know what that serial number is. So let me pull up my web browser view here. And we will look up that typewriter. It's H5062.86. And so we'll go to Corona. You uh, select the brand up here in this little corner. Uh, Corona to find the dates. This takes you to the age tables. And so we'll go scroll down to Corona fours. And the H5 code brings us to 1925. So Basically, that's how an age list works. Um, if does anybody have, have any questions about finding out how the uh, how to when, determine when a typewriter was made, or have specific examples that they want to find out? I have a question. How, what do you do if you search throughout a page and your serial number is just nowhere in those ranges? Well, then there's two things you can do. Um, if you are uploading it to the website, uh, you can leave uh, like the last digit with an X instead of a number. And someone will probably try to come around and, uh, uh, and tell you what date it would be, someone more knowledgeable. Um, or you can use the photo galleries to kind of try and figure out a range. If other people have figured out what their dates are and it's not in the database, um, like some certain older brands, uh, people have knowledge about those brands that I don't. And so they'll date their typewriters correctly. And sometimes you can go in and say, we go back to Corona. Uh, Corona. Here in the photo galleries and select four. Say if I didn't know what the age was, uh, then I would look here in the serial numbers and try to figure out where my serial number uh, is closest to uh, based on the galleries that are already updated or that are already uploaded. So that's another thing you can do. Uh, the third thing is of course, to just upload the machine to the database with uh, a 
approximate year attached and someone will probably come around and say oh this looks like a you know 1925 or something like that um beyond that i don't know how how you can get a date uh if it's not in database because i pretty much anytime i find uh any kind of age list or any kind of information like that i will uh put it in an age list on on the database um, hey Ted, my uh, yeah. my and Terry's 145. I was the only one on the database when I put it on. I'm okay. not even sure what decade it is. <laughs> and Terry's uh, would probably be 50s, 60s because uh, before. Um, oh yeah, they got absorbed by Underwood, didn't they? Yeah, they got absorbed by Underwood. Before that, they did some models for Underwood in the early 60s. Um, so you can probably put 19 you know, 6X or 19 5X in there. And if at some point we come up with better data, uh, let me see what I have for Antares. Probably nothing. Do I have anything for Antares? Oh, I do. Um, okay, so is it a Parva? No, it's a 145. 145, yeah, see, I don't have any numbers for that, so. Yeah. Uh, if we in the future do get numbers though, and you put it in there with a, you know, 195X, um, we will use the new information. I, I, when I get new information, I'll go through the listings in the galleries and correct ones if I have new information uh, or if I have better information. So sometimes you'll just find your, your gallery uh, just straight up changed and you didn't do it, that was me. <laughs> so let's see uh browsing typewriter galleries uh you guys probably know how to do that say if we go to abc and just select a portable uh you'll see here we have what i call tpv or typewriter porn view which gives you a little strip of a of a picture of the main picture uh, if we are logged in, and I will go ahead and use the test account, you will see other views here. Uh, you have full frontal view, which uh, gives you the entire picture. If you want to do like careful examination of the machines by year and serial number, you also have a grid view, which I find useful for just kind of seeing uh, things in a compact way. Um, then if we go to galleries, you'll see we have uh, the same kind of views here, except we have uh, TPV, the grid view, and what's called SRV or serious research, research view. And that one allows you to do searches. So you can pick up all the Antares. Uh, I guess we only have 10 Antares in there. Um, you can search by model, you can search by year, nine, six, four, uh, and it'll just pull up everything. So that's that's a good research tool to pull down a uh, variety of, of machines to look at if you're doing research. Um, let's see. We can go to typefaces and you can actually search the typefaces and pull up, uh, well, you can pull up uh, typefaces by model. So if we go to just Adler 46, you'll see typefaces that have been uploaded for the Adler 46, uh, or if you go to Royal and select, say aristocrat, you'll see what kind of typefaces aristocrats have come in. So not too much variety, but uh, anyway, those are some of the tools you can use there. Uh, and I'm just going to go through the tools real quick. Um, if you want to view all of the brands, 
You can see which ones here have notes or a serial number list uh, and which ones actually have galleries here with these little icons. So if you just want to stroll through and see which ones for sure have galleries, which ones for sure have age tables, you can get an idea of that by going to the typewriter brand list. And you can also see which ones have been newly modified by going to the last modified date. And uh, you can see that the last one I updated was Hammond and Veritiper, uh, Hall, Voss, Burroughs, Smith Premier, uh, and so on. Let's see. Next one, well, there's all, also the patent base. You can search through typewriter patents between 1929 and 1951 uh, if you're doing some research there. Uh, if you have uh, questions about uh, repair and maintenance, we have a whole section on typewriter repair and maintenance uh, starting, well, basically all these are available to you just to page through and uh, got some old books in here that I've scanned and put up for people to look at. There's parts manuals. There are service manuals for quite a wide variety of American typewriters. Um, let's see, there's some resources. There's the typewriter repair shops from Richard Polt, uh, IBM's electric maintenance repair series, some links for various things that you might want to do. Uh, let's see, and if you are logged in as a member, you have your account page, which allows you to change your avatar, email, password, or your description, which is the little thing that comes up next to your picture. And now that we're out of, I will go in as a typewriter hunter and show you how those things are all different your account now, if you're logged in as a typewriter hunter, allows you to put in links for your blogs for any pages you've made regarding typewriters, uh, shows you your galleries. And if you have galleries, uh, you can download your gallery list as a CSV, uh, comma separated value list that you can import into a database uh, and therefore have all of your stuff updated in your own database. Uh, you can embed your collection on a blog if you want or any kind of web page using these uh, links. And then, of course, you can change your avatar, email, password, and so on. Now, if we go to galleries, we can either click that link or create a new typewriter gallery. And say I own this typewriter. You can either have a typewriter in your collection or not in your collection. And that just depends on whether you own it or not. And that's just a classification for you. It doesn't make any difference for us. Uh, it just helps you under, you know, determine which ones are gonna be shown in your typewriter gallery and which ones are ones that you've just cited. Um, and let's say I wanna put that Corona 4. Let's see if I can, yeah, there we go, Corona. Hey, Ted, do you know if it's possible to make that there, that window full screen? I think Zoom's having a little bit of trouble. Oh, uh, um, it's just hard to read. It's okay if it's not. I just, I figured if it was a one button thing where you could make the window full screen. Well, let's see, I can. Uh, if if uh, users just select speaker view, it'll be uh, full screen, right? Yeah, I'm just trying to get his window bigger because I think Zoom, um, his actual window explorer, just because the, the, the text on the web page is a little hard to read. Okay, let me do this. Ah, there we go. Yes. Uh, I'll bring this up so that it's... That, that actually helps a lot. I think it, that text okay. is a little bit clearer. Thank you. Excellent. So then you select the typewriter model and brand. Uh, year of manufacture, we find out that it's 1925. So we'll put that in there. And serial number is H50628. And I have here, I 
let's see. This is a test. And I want to upload a, a front facing typewriter photo. Uh, let's see, so this virtual Hermans, Corona 4. There we go. And we will use that one. And for everyone that's watching, I'm sorry, I just, I'm a big Zoom nerd. So we couldn't see the window that you were just in. Uh huh. So just so everyone knows, he wasn't just dancing his mouse around. <laughs> Oh, okay. So we couldn't see the window that you were choosing the image or whatever. Okay. Um, let's see. And then I choose type safe typeface sample. And well. And then we create the gallery. You can watermark the photo or not, depending on your preference. Either check or uncheck that box. And what will come up again is you've got this uh, gallery now entered. And you can add links. Let's say you have a, a link to your blog you want to uh, say a blog post about this typewriter, or you have a, a web page that you've created specifically for this typewriter. Um, you can put in the description and the URL there and create links, and you can create as many links as you want for it. I tend to use that to anytime I make a blog post using that typewriter, I will link to it in the typewriter database and then link back to the uh, gallery page in my blog. So there's cross-linking back and forth. Google really likes that. Um, you can also add more photos. So here I am with a bunch of photos and I just want to, where is my, there it is. Here's my docs. Virtual Harmons. And you can either uh, upload photos individually using this uh, uh, thing right here, which I rarely do because I really like to grab a whole bunch of photos and drag and drop them into this. Or maybe I have to be in the same window. There we go. Oh, nope, that's not what it wanted either. This worked when I tried it, and now it's not working. Ah, okay. Well, you can drag and drop photos into that box, and I think Zoom is causing me issues here because it opened all of those windows, or all those pictures in my browser. And uh, now my browser's gone. Okay. I was not expecting that. There we go. Uh, okay, now I'm completely off track. So let me, we've kind of figured out how to upload images, uh, galleries. So I should have, yeah, there it is. I should have gallery right there. Uh, anyhow, now do you want to know how to become a member and a typewriter hunter? Anyone? Anyone? Bueller? Yes, we all do. <laughs> yes, we do. Yes, okay. <laughs> it feels so weird to have everybody silent. Um, okay, so I've logged out. Uh, to create an account, you just go here in this drop down and fill out this form. Uh, and when you do and submit it, well, if I filled it out, um, it will send an email to your uh, email address with a link that you'll need to click. And once you've clicked that link, you'll become a verified member. Uh, and then uh, with that verified member account, you, it's it's just a basic member account. It gives gives you the access that uh, uh, I started with here in the beginning, where you have basically have the views and you have your account that you can change, but there's not really much you can change beyond that. However, if you go in your account, it will ask you if you're interested in becoming a typewriter hunter. And you can uh, view the FAQ 
And I do, I have this kind of cir circuitous route to becoming a typewriter hunter because I, it basically works really well for filtering out the spammers because uh, they won't even ask. So if you go to this post on my blog and you scroll down and you put a comment in that says, hey, upgrade test account. Please, uh, and submit that as a comment. Usually the same day, probably within a couple of hours, I will go ahead and manually upgrade you to Typewriter Hunter, which gives you access to all of that uh, uploading. You have access to uh, the file area. Let me go ahead and show you the file area. And I log in with the Typewriter Hunter account. You have access to this file area here with uh, a good chunk of the age list that we've used to create the dates, the age list uh, that you see on the site itself. And we also have uh, typeface um, catalogs, we have blue books, we have uh, dealer information uh, about uh, the models that they offered. We have more age lists. We have some research from other uh, historians. Uh, and you can download all of this stuff and uh, enjoy it on your own computer. We have typographical resources. Um, oh, and uh, Ted, you can also add that $2 a month Patreon. Oh, yeah. Thing, yeah. If you have a. Uh, so uh, worth it. Yeah, if you want to uh, become a Patreon, uh, we have a $2 a month uh, level that has you join the uh, Mechanics Club, and that gives you 50% off all the PDFs in the selfie store. So we have mm -hmm. lots and lots of repair resources there. We have some repair resources here on the site for free, also here in the uh, file area and also here in the quick references. Um, which I showed you before. So there's lots of free stuff. And then we have some stuff that we sell to make money to buy more books and stuff. Mm -hmm. And let's see, there's some other things. We have special, uh, special research pages sometimes. And this one is called Operation SCM Date Code, where we're gathering the date codes on Smith Coronas, uh, which are on a little label on the bottom of the machine. Um, on machines that are past like 1967, I think, they started putting these date codes on. And we're trying to, to gather enough of them to try and figure out what the code means and how to decode it. So that's uh, one project. If you have a Smith Corona with one of those date codes on it, you can uh, please enter them into here because we're uh, slowly gathering enough to uh, figure out what it all means. So that's one research project that we're working on. Uh, let's see. If you, most of the answers uh, I've answered here in the FAC, um, like what are points? How are they generated? Uh, why has my gallery been changed? Uh, what are the guidelines for uploading typewriter galleries? Uh, are there rules? What happens if I break the rules? Nobody's, well, one person broke the rules years ago and I had to ban hammer that guy, but he was uploading porn. So, but this has been a relatively uh, problem-free site to deal with. Uh, really wonderful collection of uh, collectors, uh, great community. I basically haven't had to use the administration tools for probably four years. <laughs> so I'm very happy about that. You can see your fellow typewriter hunters here in the, oh, I got a message, but I don't know what it was. Uh, you can see their collection. Say if I wanna look at Yui Wachendorf's collection, I can see uh, how many he has in his actual collection. Uh, let's take a 
take a look at what he's got. And this is, of course, also uh, ordered by views. You can change the views. And see the porn view and the full frontal. Somebody is messaging me, and I don't know. Oh, it's my mom. <laughs> Sorry, mom. I have to look at your target later. Uh, let's see. What else did I have? Wrote down all of this stuff, and I'm so discombobulated. Uh, let's see. Changing that. I covered that covered that. In many of these views, you can download a CSV file down here at the bottom. And what that does is gives you a data file, uh, which I won't open. Let's cancel that because it's just a comma separated values list. Uh, let's see. I have, think I take, I've taken up the 20 minutes. Any questions since i have some i do have a question okay uh first of all this is the greatest thing for all of us around the planet so thank you so much you're welcome um, i'm i'm i hope i explained it reasonably well yeah. i'm i'm not yeah. great no, at that did. sort of thing <laughs> no it's, it's fantastic i guess uh, just a general thought from you what to do with the oddball typewriters that don't really fit into you know i've got a few nippo typewriters and they don't they're, they're rebranded in australia where do i put them do i just throw them off there and you'll sort it out i don't you want can, to do any work yeah you can put it on there and kind of tag me or you can actually put it in the model name and say you know have it be nippo unknown if you put in unknown i'll go look at it and see if i can figure it out and if it's a name that we don't have in the categories uh i will create that category okay and so like for instance this one is a cherry land, but we all know that it's a nippo. Yeah, that's I that's a weird I looking had, thing, you know. Yeah, I thought I had cherry land in here, but no, I don't. I will add it. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. It's anytime, less about that one typewriter, but there's all sorts of oddballs, aren't there? Yeah, anything you get that is not in the categories, uh, you can let me know any way that's available uh, to. Oh, now I have chat that I haven't paid attention to. <laughs> uh, yeah, if you let me know either in the comments of the machine listing itself or in the, uh, oh, there we go, um, in the name of the machine, then I will catch that and I will add that uh, to the thing. You can also email me at, uh, at archivist at typewriterdatabase.com. Um, Maxim over in Russia does that all the time because he's always getting machines that have that aren't categorized in the in the database. So uh, just let me know and I will go ahead and add the category. Got it. And let's see. Let I want to thank you, Ted, for this. Like this is an amazing glue that kind of holds our whole uh, community together. Uh, being able to, you know. You're, you're, I'm off in Japan here, but I buy a typewriter and I can immediately kind of fan it out to everybody. Mm -hmm. Hey, look what I got. And it's just such a delight to be able to check out what I have and, and see what other people have and all that. That's really great. Yeah, I, uh, it, that was a thing that wasn't available when I first started and I was just hopping mad that I couldn't do that. And so <laughs> I have resolved to fix that problem. And that's kind of what I've devoted my, uh, collecting life too because i certainly I love, don't go after the rare typewriters go ahead oh i was just gonna reiterate what john was saying i absolutely love it too and it's really fun to be able to go back and look at the ones that are no longer in my collection that i've either gifted or sold so that i can kind of remember what i put in there on them and and just to have that history of all the machines i've ever mm -hmm. been able to enjoy it's really great so thank you so much for everything you've done and thank you for putting them in because every time you do that, and even if you get rid of that machine, your listing is in there forever. And we use that all the time for research. So like uh, we were doing research on Valentine's not long ago, and I had to reformat the entire Valentine gallery uh, listing because uh, there were so many Valentines that were misfiled or misdated. 
Mm -hmm. um, and although we don't actually have a good age list for Valentines, we can generally tell whether they were 69s or 70s era based on the spool covers and the uh, little nibbins on the top that keep the case from scratching the, the top of the machine. So I was able to organize that by serial number, which should help the researcher who's researching them understand that series a little better and maybe at some point come up with an age list. Thank uh, you, definitely. Reverend. And I want to thank you for these too. <laughs> oh yeah, that's another thing I wanted that didn't exist when I first started. Uh, I made those books because I wanted those books. And uh, I thought maybe somebody else would too. So I offered them up. Um, basically anything I do is because I want it to happen. I, you know, I've always wanted a book that I could open up and, you know, say, what, how do I figure out what spool, ribbon spool this is? How do I change the, oops, close in 55 seconds. We're almost done. Any other questions? Uh, Ted, what do you think of my t-shirt? I love it. I love it. <laughs> okay, we got 42 seconds. Thank you, Reverend Monk. Really appreciate your work. You're welcome. Thank you for enjoying it. Uh, yeah, love you. <laughs> indeed, thank you. <laughs> 30 you, seconds. I don't know if you can hear Can you hear me? I can. Oh, hi. Um, quick question. If you have a collection, is there a space to put just like kind of cool manuals or, or books that you may come across regarding typewriters? You know, instruction manuals, um, not the typical ones, but maybe the ones that were sent from the companies to the employees. Uh, anything, anytime I get stuff like that, uh, if it's mm -hmm. an instruction manual for the machine, I send it to Richard Polt because he has a page for that.